Therefore, it's now time for member statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, well, thank you, Speaker. Today, uh, Speaker, I stand and ask those in the House and those across the province in recognition and support of Rare Disease Day. Internationally, Rare Disease Day is celebrated the last day of February. This year, today, February the 29th, a rare date in itself. And today, participants from over 85 countries and regions are taking part in over 650 events, from symposiums and debates to marches, ex exhibitions and concerts. And while we see today some acknowledgement from this government on the need to address the challenges faced by our rare disease patients, it's my hope that through recognition of Rare Disease Day in Ontario, we can help move that acknowledgement to action and the answers sufferers deserve. The truth is, Speaker, that while there are 1 in 12 Canadians affected by rare diseases, many in the public, the media and the government are unaware of the challenges patients face across the province to diagnose uh, and treatment. There are actually over 7,000 recognized rare diseases, and yet despite those growing numbers, rare disease patients are most often forced to suffer in isolation without the support, awareness and resources available to those with more commonly diagnosed diseases. The recognition of Rare Disease Day is one way we can continue to work to build the support and awareness. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to rise today to recognize Emma Donahue, author, screenwriter, and London West constituent. Londoners, and indeed all Canadians, are incredibly proud of Donahue's Academy Award nomination for the screen version of her critically acclaimed novel, Room. This international bestseller, published in 2010, is a harrowing but uplifting exploration of a mother's love for her son. Room went on to be shortlisted for just about every literary prize there is, including the man Booker. As a film, Room earned more accolades, including the People's Choice Award at TIFF, four Academy Award nominations, and last night, the Oscar for Best Actress. Donahue's extraordinary achievement is notable on several fronts. First, her literary and commercial success shows the importance of public investments to encourage the writing, publishing, distribution, and promotion of books by Canadian authors and poets. Second, TIFF provided a catalyst for room to draw film audiences worldwide, reinforcing the value of the festival and profiling Canadian talent on an international stage and the economic impact of financial support for Ontario's film and cultural sector. Third, with females making up only about 10% of movie screenwriters and very few leading roles written for women, Donahue's insistence on adapting room for the screen herself makes her a powerful role model for women in the film industry. Speaker, I know I speak for all MPPs in saying to Emma, we celebrate your incredible talent, we congratulate you on your many achievements, and we can't wait for your next book, The Wonder, to be released on September 27th. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Beaches East York. Well, well, thank you, Speaker. And these are sunny days in my riding of Beaches East York. All along the beach, on Family Day weekend past, I had the pleasure of joining local councillor Mary Maria McMahon for the grand opening of our winter stations right across the boardwalks of Beaches East York. The event, in its second year, turns the beach into a magical and inviting place in the winter by transforming the beach's lifeguard stations into unique art exhibits. The art exhibits are selected by a jury with representation from architectural firms, the City of Toronto, and consultants in the GTA. And the competition this year almost doubled its participation with 372 submissions from 49 different countries. And of those submissions, eight were chosen, the installations were built, and they will continue to be exhibited until March the 20th. So the winter stations have brought the boardwalk alive for a second year in a row, with participating projects from across the province, including OCAD University, Ryerson and Laurentian University, and from other people from around the world. Now, these exhibits attract visitors to Beaches East York area, and they give a great boost to local restaurants and other businesses. Mayor Torrey visited this weekend, as did my sister and constituent, Roberta Tevlin, wow. who gave the permanent pilot project for a fire pit a two thumbs up. So, Speaker, I would encourage all members of this House to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to come down to my writing and experience these unique and wonderful artistic installations. Thank you. Sunny way, you. sunny day. She, uh, she nailed her word count, that's for sure. 
The member, further member statements. The member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, today I rise to remember and pay tribute to Vic Hader. Vic passed away on February 23rd at the age of 77. Vic was an incredibly successful businessman and community leader. He purchased his first hotel 43 years ago and went on to own a number of very successful businesses. In Stratford, he owned the Arden Park Hotel and the Festival Inn. Vic will be remembered for his humble and hardworking spirit. He supported the Stratford Rotary Complex, Stratford General Hospital, the Stratford Perth Humane Society, Stratford Summer Music, church groups, and many other community organizations. Vic's love for animals was clear to anyone who saw him with his Cocker Spaniels. I will remember Vic as a well-respected member of the racehorse community. I would like to extend my condolences to Vic's wife, Joanne, his children, Edward, Stephanie, Gregory, and their partners, his grandchildren, and all of his family and friends. Today in Stratford, they honored Vic at a funeral service at the Stratford Festival. I have no doubt that many are mourning his loss and sharing the special memories he has left behind. Vic will be remembered for all he did to make Stratford such a wonderful community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burnley, Graham Alton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to discuss the issue of privacy and security when it comes to our personal data. A recent case in the States has raised issues around how important this issue is when it comes to our personal data with regards to our phones. In the U.S., there's a court case right now which is ordering Apple to unlock an encrypted phone. It raises questions around how important our personal information is. We acknowledge the importance of our personal information when it comes to our health information, but but what about all of our digital communications? We know in a similar analogy that tampering with mail is a serious federal offense. If you are to steal mail, it's an offense that can be tried by indictment for up to 10 years in jail as a punishment. In fact, stopping mail with the intent to search it or to rob it is another indictable offense with up to life imprisonment. So it shows that as a society, we acknowledge the importance of our communication being secure and private. In fact, I would make the argument that secure and private information in terms of our communication is linked to our freedom of thought and expression. So as a default, in our province, we don't have laws that clearly regulate and ensure protection for the public with respect to our communication, whether it's digital, through email, or through texting, or through other forms of communication. So we need to look at this issue as a human rights issue, as a freedom of thought issue, and make it a default that our communications are encrypted, are secure, so that we ensure the privacy of our information in much the same way we protect our information through the mail. Let's move forward in a new technological and digital era and address this issue. Thank you. Further member statements, member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very proud to rise in the House today to recognize a fantastic individual from my grey riding of Davenport, Beverly Gordon. Beverly's contribution to my riding and to our province can best be measured by the hundreds of Ontario families whose lives have been positively impacted through contact with her and the Safe Haven Project for Community Living located in Davenport, which she founded 25 years ago and of which she was CEO. For those who have not had the privilege of visiting Safe Haven, it is an invaluable organization that provides residential and respite services to families with children with multiple disabilities and complex medical needs. Beverly wholeheartedly believes that every child is special and can flourish with the support of their families and the community. Under her direction, Safe Haven has enriched the quality of life and significantly extended the lifespans for medically challenged children in our province. Today, her vision has taken on a broader scope, as other communities have set up services using the innovative Safe Haven model. Beverly has lived her life with remarkable selflessness, dedicated to making life better for some of our most vulnerable citizens. I truly mean it when I say that I could not be more proud to have been present as she received the Order of Ontario just a short few weeks ago. On behalf of the families whose lives you've changed for the better and those whom Safe Haven, Safe Haven will continue to help, thank you for all that you do, Beverly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member, Sims, the member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to report the results of my annual survey of Oxford businesses, and I want to thank everyone who took the time to respond. Again this year, the cost of doing business in Ontario is a major concern. 92% of the businesses said they would be negatively impacted by the mandatory pension plan, and 67% said the impact would be significant. 
All of the respondents said they had been impacted Order. by the increase in hydro costs, and 72 per cent said the impact was significant. Businesses reported their biggest challenges were, quote, rising government costs, hydro rates, and increasing cost. Last week, the government had an opportunity to address these concerns, but instead presented a budget that will make it more expensive for both people and businesses in Ontario. This year, I launched my business survey during the CFIB Red Tape Awareness Week, and it seems appropriate given that 75 per cent of the respondents said that red tapes has been increasing. Businesses reported that the cost of red tape is significant. One said it cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Another said $50,000 a year. One small business said that red tape has reduced their revenue by 25 per cent. These businesses are facing real challenges, and the government's red tape reduction photo ops haven't solved the problem. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all the business operators who took the time to tell me about their company and the share and share the challenges that they are facing. We know how hard they work, and I hope that the government will listen to thank their you. concerns so that we can create a climate thank where you. our businesses can succeed. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Mississauga, Arendale. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we all know that Ontario's highest official honor, Order of Ontario, is awarded to exceptional individuals who have benefited other individuals by excelling in any field. Mr. Speaker, it is an honor and a privilege for me to talk about Madeleine Edwards, who has been awarded the Order of Ontario for 2015 and is an outstanding constituent of my riding of Mississauga, Arendale. Mr. Speaker, Madeleine Edwards is known for her staunch advocacy for social justice. As we celebrate the Black History Month, it is important for us to celebrate the contributions and the extraordinary work that people like Madeleine Edwards perform day in, day out. Madeleine has been a long-term leader and a voice for the community. She was the founding member of Mississauga and area chapter of the Congress of Black Women of Canada, an organization dedicated to improving the lives of black women and their families. She created a program called Suffering in Silence to support women who remained in abusive relationship due to poverty and unemployment. This program formed the basis of a non-profit housing complex where the victims of abuse could find a secure and safe place to live. Mr. Speaker, I am very proud of Madeline's work and contribution to our city and our province. On a personal note, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank her for her continued support, advice, and advocacy on behalf of my constituents. Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to congratulate Madeline Edwards. She is sitting right here uh, on the East Gallery for receiving the province's highest honor, the Order of Ontario, and wish her all the best in future endeavors. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Congratulations. For their member statements, the member from Ajax, Pickering. Thank you, Speaker. I'm in the House today to acknowledge Grandview Children's Centre. It's the only children's centre treatment-wise uh, in Durham Region, providing expert pediatric treatment and rehabilitation services to well over 5,000 children and youth with special needs. Grandview has been operating in the region of Durham for some 63 years, and its headquarters are in Oshawa. On November 20, 2015, the Minister of Children and Youth Services, Tracy McCharles, Durham MPP Grenville Anderson and myself joined Ajax Mayor Steve Parrish and all members of Ajax Council when they announced that the town was giving Grandview Children's Centre a five-acre parcel of land on Harwood Avenue North to build a new $44 million multi-story, 68,000-square-foot facility. Well done, Ajax. This is great news as I've been working with Grandview as an MPP and as an Ajax Councillor since approximately 2005. I was honoured to be the presenter of the very first half-million-dollar capital grant check to them uh, for redevelopment and programs in 2007. Uh, this past July, our Ontario government, through the Ministry of Child and Services, agreed to provide $850,000 for critical building renewal projects, Grandview again, from our provincial government. I am very pleased that our newly tabled budget includes many investments, strategy for children, and through the province, as well as an investment of $333 million over five years in autism services. And the executive director of Grandview, Lorraine Sunstrand's man, has spoken very highly of the investments the province is making. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports.